Hey guys, um, so I just saw Rudy's video and he was showing off two cards and he said he bought them from the same person. It was a foil Yagamera's Hollow, which is a Gem Mint 10 with the ID number and you can match the ID numbers and a Beckett card, which is a 9.5 foil powder keg. And he bought these two cards together for $390 which is really good because the seller in September wanted $750 for them. Now, I'm not sure what time Rudy bought them. Did he buy them you know, recently? Did he buy them uh, a few months ago? Um, that part, I'm not sure, but the seller had the cards on September and he was trying to get $750 our best offer. Of course, I passed because uh, whenever someone says I'm going to uh, Rudy's interested, I just lose all interest in the collection because I know they're just pitting one bidder against another bidder and I'd rather have Rudy buy it for as cheap as possible than for me to buy it more expensive than I need to. Uh, so it's a compounded issue, right? So in that scenario, it's a lose-lose for me. But he says, what about these two? And you can confirm that it's the exact same buyer. And I'm sure that a lot of Rudy's collect sins are come i mean they get pitched to me at a much higher value and then there's that email that says oh rudy's interested and i just say okay no i know you're pitching me at double the value right so in this case he wants 750 dollars. he eventually sells to rudy for less than 400 that's a good buy at 750 dollars i don't know if that's a great buy i just don't think it's a good buy i don't even think it's a good buy it's definitely not a great buy. It's uh, probably break-even buy. But um, when Rudy buys it for $390, that's a really good buy. There's another video on his channel where he buys a subscriber's boxes for like 10 cents and a dollar. That's a great buy. I mean, some of the Innistrad, Averson Restored, um, what we would call a pioneer today, the dude was offloading boxes at pennies and a dollar. So it's not about, um, let me make it very clear, it's not about the price currently. It's a price that you buy that matters. If you buy something very cheap, of course you'll be able to sell it. I'll use Dragon Maze as an example. If someone went to you and said, you know, I have 100 boxes of Dragon Maze and I want to sell it to you for $40 a box, I would jump on that. Do I think Dragon Maze is a good set? No. Is expected value of opening one good? No. But the value, the buy list value of a Dragon Maze, I think it's $60. So you can flip it anytime to any local, any buy list online. And that's the same with these cards. So a lot of questions I get, um, they don't understand the common, very common basic principle. Buy low, sell high. So people were buying reserve list cards during the summer, and I was as well when our power nine or whatever they were buying vintage in the summer and because there was all this hype and growth and that was the worst time to buy it because that was a high now they're selling low now and that is the worst time to sell because it's a low so smart people buy low sell high and that's what rudy's doing he got these for essentially half off right the guy wanted 750 rudy paid them 390 Maybe he waited a little bit, and obviously by on September, he had contacted Rudy. Because you can see the date stamps. So, I, I mean, there are other things that, like, Rudy has bought, like, Onslaught. He bought a case of Onslaught from, I believe, Dave and Adams. Because uh, I was interested in the same case. We buy most of our supplies from Dave and Adams. He buys his Dragon Ball Z. He buys his Nightmare Before Christmas. Essentially, failed card games from Dave and Adams, and that's because I buy this, and so I know exactly what inventory is missing. Because it's a large chunk. I think there's only a few of us that buy via email. And I know another place that he buys, which I'm almost certain, but I cannot, because I, something, when he'll show it on video a few months later, I'll be like, oh, hey, I remember that inventory going missing. Just like the Onslaught box. I was like, oh, hey, I, I was going to pull the trigger in that Onslaught box. So here... Rudy gets really, really good prices, okay? Um, you would, this guy would probably sell to you or I for $750, and he would be happy. He would sell to Rudy for $390, and he would be pleased. 
you can see the gap is about 50%, right? That's buy list. So, so many people come to me and they want to sell at retail. Or they want to sell at like retail minus 13%, which is eBay. And sometimes I'll buy, sometimes I won't. And then, but they're willing to sell to Rudy for 50%, 40%, 30%, 10%. And of course, he's going to buy. I mean, I would just get as much capital as possible because if you're buying, let's imagine that this car, these two cards are worth $750. Let's just imagine. Well, if the guy's trying to sell me at retail, there's no margin for me, so I have no interest in buying it. But if he sells for free 90, I would probably say yes. But he never gives me the free 90 price. And that's why, you know, I really, I do follow Rudy, but you got to take it with a grain of salt because the price that he buys the cards at, it's much, much lower than either you or I or anyone can buy the cards at. So if Tolarian Community College wanted to start like a Rudy thing, he would get the same offer because of his popularity, right? Rudy's very popular, so people will take collections to him and they would be willing to sell for half off, but they'd ne nobody would ever do that to me. Right? They always sell for full retail or a TCG player buy list plus 5%. I mean, they're even asking for above buy list, which is insane. Um, and now, you know, I don't have to do that anymore because there's a blood in the streets, right? So I can feed too, as I found out. Hi, guys.